This video is about the what's, the why, and the how when it comes to shareholder loan in a project finance transaction. So I previously made a video about the type and form of equity contribution, amount of equity contribution, and timing of equity contribution. In this video, I want to focus more on the form of equity contribution and talk about the shareholder loan. So the first question that I want to answer is, what is a shareholder loan? So a shareholder loan is just a loan that the shareholders are providing to the project company. Okay, so it's a form of equity contribution, which is in form of loan to the SPV. So if we think about it, and this is my kind of confused and puzzled uh, face. So basically, you know, if you tell me this and I never heard of this uh, facility called shareholder loan, I would say, so you mean that, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, taking money from one pocket and putting it in another pocket and charging interest on it? And the answer is yes. And then you will have to ask me, but why? So basically when it comes to the why, the first thing is the second point here, which is of course for tax purposes, right? In some jurisdictions, uh, you're allowed to deduct interest as an expense you know, for your tax calculation. So if you have more interest, meaning that you pay less taxes. So one reason is for tax purposes and in every jurisdiction, it's different. And some of time there are some limits to the amount of interest that you can charge as well as expense. So the second reason is basically it's more easier to extract cash from the project accounts, project revenue account in form of shareholder loan rather than dividend. Why is that? Because dividends are restricted by earnings, right? By retained earnings. So and we know that in the income statement, in the profit and loss statement, we have depreciation. And in large infrastructure project, you might have a high depreciation of your asset, your capex. You can depreciate them over the life of the project. So you might have a high depreciation, especially in the beginning, uh, depending on the type of depreciation that you apply. So basically, if you want to rely on the retained earning, you might not be able to extract any cash, although the cash is available. So one way to extract cash and not being limited by returned earnings is the shareholder loan. So these are the two main points why a shareholder loan can become useful in a project finance deal. Now let's go and look at an Excel file and see how to include the shareholder loan in a financial model. Okay, so this is a, the financial model that I prepared for you. In column E, we have the labels. In column F, we have the units. In column G, H and I and G is left out for the constants for the inputs. In column A, we have the sum of the row, so it's our sum column. And starting from column M, we do our projections. In terms of the structure, we have basically a one-pager model. We have the inputs, the calculation, and then we present the results. When it comes to modeling the shareholder loan, I suggest that you first don't think about uh, the shareholder loan versus the pure equity. You come and you do your calculation of debt sizing and equity sizing. For example, here I am in the sources and uses. I have a total project cost and then I size my debt 
and then based on that I size my equity so once I have this information which is my maximum base equity required and I also have this line which is the base equity drawdown schedule then I can come and model my shareholder loan so I go back to my input sheet or the input section of my model I need couple of additional inputs. I need basically to have a percentage shareholder loan. This way I can size my shareholder loan based on this percentage, which is fixed. Then I can also introduce an interest rate. And for the repayment of the shareholder loan, it can be basically modeled with a cash swap or it can also have a tenor but here i'm going to show you how to do it simply with a cash swap okay so you present your inputs and then what you do is you come to your equity section so you already have as i told you your equity drawdown schedule you're going to take 30 percent of that drawdown and you're going to present it as pure equity drawdown okay then whatever is remaining after um, the pure equity drawdown you're going to put it as the shareholder loan so basically you are sizing your shareholder loan based on this percentage that we presented in the input which is the 70 percent and then you also do a typical shareholder loan interest calculation which is an interest due but not paid right so it's very important to make this distinction that interest and any you know payment to shareholder loan is due but the repayment of it depends on the cash availability so let me take you through the cash flow waterfall so that would be interesting to see where the shareholder loan stands in the cash flow waterfall so we have our cash flow available for that service of course that service is always senior to any repayment to shareholder right and that's the whole purpose of a cash flow waterfall to make sure that this cash flow available for that service does not, you know, is clean off any payments to shareholder in the OPEX part. Basically, these OPEX, or let me say it in a better way, all these operating expenses, they should be actually expenses that are directly related to the project to the operation of the project and does not contain any dividends or any distribution to shareholders anything that is due to the shareholders should come after cash flow available for that service so we pay our interest we pay our debts on our senior debts and then we also might need to put some reserves account that service reserve account which i show here we might have other reserves account like maintenance reserve account so once we are done with all these obligations we can finally get to this line called cash flow available for shareholder loan okay so we separate the cash flow available for shareholder loan and the cash flow available for dividend distribution so that's the only trick so when we are paying this interest the shareholder loan interest paid we always check for cash availability and we also make sure that we are satisfying all the distribution lockups before we pay anything to shareholders under interest or either principal okay so the repayment of shareholder loan is different than a senior loan because we need to always check for cash availability so as you can see here i'm coming back to the shareholder loan section I calculate what I need to pay it is due to shareholders under shareholder loan interest and then I will come and check 
whether I can distribute. So I have a flag that checks whether I can distribute or not distribute during these periods. And then I take my cash flow available and any retained cash beginning balance. And that's going to be my cash flow available for shareholder loan interest payment. And then based on that cash availability, by just using a simple minimum function, we are able to see how much interest will actually be paid under the shareholder loan. And anything that is not paid is going to be included in the balance of the loan as shareholder loan capitalized interest. Okay, so once we understand how much shareholder loan needs to be paid, then we will also use our uh, percentage SWIP to pay any ca a shareholder loan uh, principal repayment, which is going to be paid, you know, from this uh, cash available. And of course, as I said, the important part is also make sure that before we allow any distribution under shareholder loan, we check for the dividend lockups. And we also need to model the distribution lockups in the model as well, which can be a topic for another video. So in this video, I talked to you about what is shareholder loan, why it is preferred in some transactions and a couple of tricks about how to model it. So I hope you find it useful and see you in my next episodes.